Hello everyone. Uh, in this video we're going to uh, basically in a way continue where we left off um, as far as techniques but um, we're going to create a bouncing ball um, just a little bit more in depth uh, gives a little bit more hands-on with creating the motion tweens and getting used to the tools um, and we're also going to have this ball bounce from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. Now uh, we're also going to make sure that we're going to convert the ball to a symbol. We're going to have two layers of animation. Uh, one will be the ground line. One will be the actual ball animating. Uh, we're going to insert frames. Uh, it, you know, probably about two to three seconds of animation, so anywhere between 60 and 90 frames. Um, and we're going to make sure the stage size is 1280 by 720. So um, I'm going to just start by creating a new template file new. And under the character animation, 1280 by 720, or you can physically change these numbers right here, but 1280 by 720 works. And then we're going to go by 30 frames per second as the frame rate. And then I'm going to go ahead, and, and this will be on ActionScript 3.0, and then we'll just go ahead and click Create. Now, from here, I'm going to just zoom out just a little bit. From here, what we can do is uh, we'll start the same process. We already have the stage size set. And now I'm going to rename my first layer, layer 1, to ground line. And if you still get this pop-up, you can always click Don't Show Again if you'd like. I'll click OK for now. And just like before, using my line tool, I'm going to drag a line holding Shift straight across the bottom of the stage. This white area is called the stage. Now, from here, just like before, I'm going to lock this layer using the little lock button next to the eyeball. This hides your layer, this locks your layer. And now I'm going to create a new layer using the little plus sign here. And if you hover over it, it says new layer. And I'm going to rename this one to ball. And just like before, I'm going to create an oval. I'm going to hold uh, using my oval tool or keyboard shortcut O. I'm going to hold shift and just go ahead and click this and drag out. Now another thing I'd like to show you is getting a little bit more into color is by selecting on the actual fill color, that's what the inside of the circle is, you'll have the stroke and the fill. I'm going to go to my swatches or I'm going to go to my color tab and I'm going to change this to a radial gradient. And what I'm going to do is you'll have these little sliders. I'm going to actually see if I switch these around you'll notice now that I have the white on the left side and the black on the right side. And what that is going to do, it's going to create the illusion of light or lighting, and it's going to give it a little bit more depth. So now that I have it here, what I can do using my paint bucket tool or keyboard shortcut K, I'm going to click, you know, right about here. And then I'm also going to highlight the outer circle. It's not absolutely necessary. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner. And I'm going to delete just the stroke. And now instead of having just a plain flat color, now we have a radial gradient, which creates that illusion of light and gives it a little bit more look of a uh, realistic look of a actual ball having uh, an alighting effect on it. So from here, I'm going to click on my ball layer. And I'm going to right click on the ball and I'm going to convert to symbol and I'm going to name it ball and the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to let's say 70 frames give or take uh, 71 frames and I'm going to create that on both layers just as we did in the previous animation and on just the ball line layer the ball excuse me just the ball layer I'm going to create a motion tween and just like before I'm going to go, you know, every 10, 15 frames, give or take, and I'm just going to have it make contact. And if you're really, really worried about the timing, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect, but um, just to give you an idea, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm really not counting the frames. I'm just kind of eyeballing distance and the actual uh, look of it here. And then I'm going to go another couple frames here, maybe a couple less, give or take, 
just to give it a little bit more timing. So one, two, and this will be, we're going to make sure this ball bounces at least three times on the stage. And then I'm going to have it exit the stage. So now from here, I have this ball. And if I press Enter, it goes whomp, whomp, whomp. And it moves a little fast at the end. So I can just click on that one layer or that one frame and have it do something like so. And I'll go ahead and drag this up a little bit more. And eh, something like that. So. Now, I'm going to press enter one more time. And we have our bouncing ball. Now, a couple really cool little tricks. Um, what I first thing I want to do before I even start playing around with any of my other information that we have on the stage here, you'll see the actual movement of this ball. I want to start to um, lock those sort of keyframe alls. So on each one of these, Right click, yeah, da, 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 da. insert keyframe all, and I'm going to do this for each one of these. Insert keyframe all, and unfortunately, there isn't a, a keyboard or a keyboard shortcut for this. Insert keyframe all, so we have to click on each one of these little diamonds down here and insert keyframe all. And right click. Oop. Now I'm going to just show you insert keyframe all. And it should work as long as insert keyframe all. I like to do each one individually just in case. But um, now if I make any adjustments to this, it should uh, be fine. So um, now that I have that done, I'm going to start to implement the squash and stretch using the free transform tool. And what I can do is not only can I sort of, I can also rotate it if you hover just on the outside of it, something like that, <clears throat> and give it a little bit stretch here. And now you'll see it womp, and then we're going to make it squash right here and you can really exaggerate it if you like and I'm just gonna go ahead and have that go like so and now a couple frames out and give it a little bit more of a stretch so it's gonna come down it's gonna stretch it's gonna squash and then it's gonna bounce back up and it's going to return to its previous shape uh, or its original shape because we did the insert keyframe all and again every approximately about every before each one every two frames or so we're just going to go ahead and resize this and uh, transform if needed and every two frames, I'm going to. OK, good. Change. The shape, size, direction that this ball is going. Ooh. Just like so. squash drag that down and another two frames and maybe bring it a little bit smaller something like so 
So now when we play this back, we have squash, stretch, squash, stretch, and we're good. And now I'm going to show you one last thing here we can do. And using my selection tool on my ball layer, I'm going to hover over this line. You'll notice it gets a little U shape on it. And we're going to start to play around with the shape of the t motion tween to give it a little bit more intrigue. And ooh, maybe bring this here. And this is actually starting to literally begin to manipulate the actual frames of the animation itself. And we'll do something like that. And now when we play it back, And when it's playing on the stage, it doesn't necessarily, it's playing at real time. So if you press control enter, this will be real time. And now we have a bouncing ball. And if you really want on the first frame to make it something like that. something like that should be fine and I'm gonna go ahead and play it back and you can actually extend this and you'll see even the parts that you don't want to see but don't worry um, when you actually do import the export these as a uh, real video um, it'll only take what's on the stage but now we have a little bouncing ball animation uh, with a little lighting to it and uh, we've got our three bounces one two three we have our squash and stretch um, we've manipulated the actual motion tween itself but just by using the selection tool which makes things super fast and easy to adjust on the fly and um, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little animation we did. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know and uh, I'll respond as quickly as possible. Thank you.